This podcast is brought to you by Gross Busters Power Washing. With over 15 years of experience, we ensure you get the outcome you desire. Locally owned and operated, call us today, 520-955-0161 or visit azgrossbusters.com. Hey, good morning. It's Clint back with another episode of Local Marana, and I had the pleasure again this morning of being with Ed Honey, the mayor of Marana. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Clint. It's, it's wonderful to be here. A little rain last night. It rained pretty hard while we were having our council meeting. Yeah. We could hear it on the roof. It yeah. was coming down pretty good. We didn't get any at my house, but we heard it. So this morning, you want to talk about where we're at as far as the parks the recreations parks, and things things in Moran. trails so r- just go ahead and run like with that ed you know uh i talked a little bit about it uh, in the earlier podcast but uh, uh outdoor recreation <laughs> whether it be trails or facilities are so important to our community and it doesn't matter if you're a youngster that's nine months old or 90 years old We need places for people to go, places for people to congregate, spend time with each other, get exercise, uh, you know, open up and and spend time. Uh, We have one of the best trail systems in Marana in the entire county. If you go up to Dub Mountain and the Mustang Trail or the Alamo Trail or the Wild Burrow Trail, which I've hiked them all, you can walk. 10 or 12 or 15 miles in a circle and come back to the same spot. When you're out there, you see the deer, you see the coyotes, you see the javelina and the foxes and the Gila monsters. You're getting fresh air. You're getting exercise. It's something you can do with a group. I've hiked with the Dub Mountain Hiking Group a couple different times doing that. And I really enjoy that type of recreation. If you go into southern Arizona, we have the River Walk, or Southern Marana, uh, basically from Continental Ranch all the way to Sanders Road in uh, uh, in northern part of Marana, and it's miles and miles and miles walking along the river. You pass three or four parks on this trail. It's a, a paved, uh, improved mm-hmm. trail. Uh, you can ride your bike, you can roller skate, uh, you can skateboard, you can do whatever you want. And it's, again, a chance to get out in the open, get fresh air, see the animals, talk to people, and have a really good time. And it's free. It's free. You know, so we, we have great trail systems in, in our community. We also have great parks. Uh, the Tangerine Sky Park, and a lot of people see it when you're going down mm-hmm. Tangerine where you see the deer the, mm-hmm. that are out there, the stainless steel I saw it this morning on my way to... That's, that's Sky Ranch Park. They have a zip line in there. And when my nine-year-old grandson comes to visit, that's the first place he wants to go. And we don't live that close to that yeah. park, but we go anyway. But it's a beautiful park with a grassy area and a dog park and and a lot of picnic tables and swings Bas- basketball and teeter totters well, right? and a basketball court, which incidentally we're going to be putting a uh, uh, tarp top on that basketball court. It's in the budget, and one of the reasons being it's it's kind of out in the open. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of times uh, certain parts of the summer, you know, even though young people want to go shoot some hoops, it's hot. Mm -hmm. And if we could put them in the shade, you'll get a lot more use for that. There's what, four four courts there maybe? I think there's just one full one full court court. but it's got a big like 12 foot chain link around it so the ball doesn't go out in the cacti or anything but you know we want to make it usable there's a beautiful dog park there as well and i've talked to people it's split into large dog and small dog and and uh, people really enjoy going there that's a beautiful park it's 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 a great park yeah it really is i was there a couple a couple of months ago some a public event of some kind el rio park in uh uh, continental ranch where the lake is right and uh that's such a beautiful area we have bird watchers that come there because there's so much vegetation around the lake 
Uh, we have ducks and geese in the in the uh, lake. People might call it a big pond. I call it a lake. You know, if it's over a couple acres of water, it's a lake to me. Yeah, he's a desert guy. I'm a Midwest guy. We might have different terminology but, there. Uh, you know, hummingbirds love that area. Um, and no, uh, all kinds of birds, but all kinds of wildlife. Uh, deer, javelina, coyotes, foxes, you know, come down and drink out of that lake. You may have to get there at 5 in the morning mm-hmm. to see a deer, mm-hmm. but they come. And uh, it, it's a people feel comfortable. There are picnic tables around it if, to go have lunch and watch the water and right. watch the right. birds. And, and uh, that particular park also has a Frisbee golf course. Yeah. My son plays over there. And people say, Frisbee golf, that's crazy. Yeah. There are thousands of people that play Frisbee golf, and there are groups that come to Marana, play on that Frisbee golf course for free. Yes. But then they eat in our restaurants. Stay in the hotels. Or they're out of town, they stay in our hotels, or they shop in our stores. Mm Mm-hmm. And they create jobs and they create opportunities for people. So that's a really unique park. That real quick about the the, the disc golf, the the guy next door over here, Kevin Reynolds. I'll give him a little shout out. He has gotten into this. It's it benefited him health wise. He's got lost a lot of weight. Have you ever played? I haven't. My son plays. He's got. He's you want to get. Bag. You want to get frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to play with some friends. You know that. You know I, we yeah. were doing dedications. Yeah. That it's tough. It's frustrating enough to play regular golf. And I some can't of those people are golf. pretty good. Yes. But I mean, it's like, well, I got within ten feet of the yeah. basket. You know, yeah. does that count? Yeah. No, it's not horseshoes. But I've seen this guy here, and my son, and, <laughs> and one of his buddies. They've got full bags of different disc weights and and i mean they must have kevin over here must have 30 different discs for different you know distances and what he's trying to accomplish so it's a maybe that's something we should look at as a town to start hosting especially in the fall like larger larger venues we can get back to that later but i think uh, it's a very much a growing sport a lot of times parks are considered loss leaders Mm mm-hmm uh, people that come and use the parks, if you're renting a soccer field or, or a court or a baseball field, you might pay a little bit. It may pay the electricity for mm-hmm. the lights. But uh, if people come to recreate and come to our community and they see what a beautiful community it is and the amenities that we offer, whether it be parks or restaurants or stores, maybe I want to move there. Right. It's it's a neat place. Right. Another park in the Continental Ranch area is the Continental Ranch Park, which is right across from the clubhouse over there off a of coach line, mm-hmm. not too far mm-hmm. off of Silverbell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. About a 15-acre park tucked back in there. And a lot of people, if you don't live in the neighborhood, don't know it's there. And it, it's a community park. Uh, soccer fields, uh, basketball courts, tennis courts, grass, uh, uh, they have like a little skate uh, thing for, uh, you know, uh, skateboards or uh, inlines. It, it's a dugout where mm-hmm. you can do up and do your flips mm-hmm. and do whatever and stuff in there. And that park just does a tremendous business, and especially on weekends and in the summer. Young people flock over there because they can walk there from Continental Ranch, our largest community. I'm going to ask David, is that the one we were at not too long ago doing a shoot there on Coach Line? Yep. I'd never, I'd never been there. And like you say, it's kind of, it's kind of hidden there. in there. It's a beautiful – matter of fact, the setting there is just – It's tucked. You have to beautiful. drive literally between two houses to get mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. On, on a road, a mm-hmm. small road in a neighborhood. People don't know that park. And what's is that it? park called again? It's the Continental Ranch Park. Continental Ranch Park. Yeah, I'd never seen that. It's a beautiful <laughs> park. We did a did a shoot over there I don't know, you know, back in the summer. Uh, then the other park that we have over there is Crossroads Park, mm-hmm. which is the big park there by the library mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it, the Wither Tap Tap right. li- Library. That's we, a huge park. And that is a beautiful big regional park. It's one of the really three regional parks we have in Marana. 
uh, has a water park there, and uh, young people can go over there. Mostly it's young people. I mean, I might be a young person <laughs> if, I, if it's hot and I want to go cool off, but I mean, right. uh, it's open about eight months out of the year. And uh, folks can go over there and get wet and have good, clean fun with their children and grandchildren. And it, it's a great recreational place to go. You can go to the library, uh, which is a nice, beautiful library mm-hmm. there. Uh, and we have a, an arrangement with Lehman Academy that's at mm-hmm. that park. Uh, during the day and on weekends and stuff, when we're having a park events, we can use the parking from the Layman Academy as well. And a lot of times during the school year, when they're having events, they, they kind of use, use uh, some of yeah. ours. So we're working together with a uh, private uh, educational institution. But that is such a beautiful park. And it has so many things that you can do there. And it's one of those parks to where young people gravitate. During the school year, if you go to that park after school at, you know, 3.34 in the afternoon, and I'm talking youngsters from 6 or 7 to 17 or 18, yeah. they're over there talking or sitting in the shade at a picnic bench or just having a good time or kicking the soccer ball around. And, and uh, that park has been a tremendous service to our community i tammy and i were over there uh, again back this summer on a like a monday or tuesday and the place was just packed and we use that park for our independence day fourth of july celebration uh, again it's free people can come and bring a blanket and a you know a couple cold drinks and sandwiches or whatever and cover the grounds, which they do, the entire, and that is a huge park. There, every two feet, there's another blanket right, right. And, or another couple folding chairs and another family. We bring in live entertainment for the 4th of July. Uh, people can dance or sing or enjoy. And we have, I think, one of the best Independence Day celebrations it's bad. in, it's, in it's, southern it's great. Arizona. I always, I always do yours. Um, so excuse me and and the the capacity over there is as huge. far is 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 that the biggest capacity wise maybe or a may or may may be a little larger or even the heritage park may might be a little, be a little larger. larger those are the two other really you, regional each one of parks. these are ten ten thousand but what happens plus. is when we have the fourth of july celebration a lot of times we'll pick up people from other the shopping centers around there or whatever and we'll have we'll make a deal with the school and they'll pick up loads of people that park at the shopping centers and bring them to right. uh, uh, crossroads park to watch those uh, those celebrations so we get a lot of use out of that park i mean I, it it's heavily heavily used that's pretty much where you know i live in oral valley but we almost always come to the marana uh, activities, including back when it was at RMA. If you go further north in Marana, uh, San Lucas Community, which is on kind of the northeast side of the freeway and railroad there, they have a beautiful park. And they have about four or five acres there that's dug out. It's about six or eight feet deep. It's all grass, and you it's big enough for a soccer field or something in the bottom of the park. It's a water retention basin for when you get these heavy, heavy storms. But it's a park as well, so we use it, we we double the use, and I have seen it full, you know, six feet deep in, in water. Mm-hmm. And then around that area, we have swings and teeter-totters and other things for people to go, barbecues, that people can have a barbecue with their family or throw the Frisbee or the ball around with their family. So there's a beautiful park in that neighborhood. And then if you come to Orme Harn Park, there by the town hall and the uh, school uh, administrative facilities, pretty close to Estes, uh, and the Marana Chamber of Commerce is in there, our police department is there, <clears throat> that park has everything. It has a swimming pool, it has uh, four ball fields there, 
that incidentally were built by people in the community. We had a lot of room there. Back in the day, we didn't have a lot of money. We had businesses contributing money and men and women coming over and building the, the big backstops out mm-hmm. of chain link and putting in the fields and the bases and all that kind of stuff. It was people poured their heart and soul into that park to build those fields so that people could come there and recreate. And they're used heavily to this yes. day. Yes. And they've been there forever. Uh, you when know, did that park open? <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. It was opened by Pima County prior to Moran Incorporating in 1977. So that park's been there. <clears throat> it's been there, I'm going to say, since 1970 okay. or something. So it's, 50, it's been 50. there, f- you know, 50 years or more. It's a beautiful big park. And I the like trees that, trees that are border it are just 50 feet massive, tall. massive, providing uh, lots of shade. Our senior center is located in that park. We have a beautiful building, <laughs> which... Uh, I would pat myself on the back if I could get my hand back far <laughs> enough. It was one of my projects. And I'll tell you kind of how that happened. Uh, my mother, God rest her soul, and different people said, you know, there's nothing for seniors to do in North Moran or certain parts of the town. We had the highlands at Dub Mountain, mm-hmm. and you have Sunflower, uh, senior communities. Del Webb was newer down the road. But, I mean, they provided recreation for seniors in the community. And my philosophy was the reason we're a town is a lot of those seniors, people my parents exactly. age and in that group, really helped start this community. Exactly. We don't have anywhere for them to go, a place for them to go and, and get together and do field trips and go to wherever, uh, the Desert Museum or the right. casino or right. whatever as a group and feel safe and, and have things to do. I go over to that senior center occasionally. And I love to go there because everybody's my age. I was going to say, do they let you in senior <laughs> citizen homes, uh, the community yeah. centers? But that's such a beautiful park. We, when was that built? When was the senior? Uh, uh, do, 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 do. About 20 years ago. And uh, it's used a, a lot. Uh, uh, we have about three or four personnel over there. And... Uh, it's used uh, quite a bit, and we have a pool there, and we, we, we've had all car shows and tractor shows, right. and <clears throat> we've had uh, kennel clubs that want to come and do events with their, their dogs running through pipes or jumping over stuff, and they use it. Uh, we've had different groups that have come in and helped us on that park, uh, the local LDS stake came in a couple years ago, we needed some more trees. And they took it on as a project. They brought, man, 100, 200 people, men, women, and children, and planted 100 trees in that park. I mean, a lot of those trees are 10 or 15 feet tall now. But they came as part of the community, and I, I want to give them credit for doing that, and planted a bunch of trees in there. And uh, so that's a that's a beautiful park. I th- I think, and it it's often quoted wrong, but I think, and I'm going to quote it wrong, but uh, from Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. Yep. When you were describing that, because I've been in in this area now in uh, this part of Arizona for now 20 years, and to watch that growth out there where you're talking about, especially around Orame and right. the community center and all that, and it's solid well thought out well planned growth just to watch that happen close up like i've I've been able to is just it's it's just remarkable that someone had that vision before i got here to to develop to that point so i a lot of kudos to everybody and the name of that that park orme Mm -hmm. park orme uh Longtime mayor of the town of Marana, the only lady mayor we've had. We've had many ladies as vice mayor and members of the council. We have three now. <clears throat> she loves so much the out of doors and providing things for children and, and for people to do things. And uh, when Aura was uh, get pretty ill late in her life, and she and I were friends, and I 
visited her three days before she passed even. And she said, if you want to do something for me, you know, maybe put my name on. And we did. We named it Orme Harm Park. When, when was it? When did that? I it's, can't remember. It's pre-20 she, years, though. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. But, I mean, it, it's been quite a while yeah. ago. And we named that park after her. Yeah. And to memorialize her name, a great lady, person of faith. She loved everybody, and it didn't matter, like I said, if you were nine months or 90 years old. You know, she, she was actively involved with the people in the community. Really, our first town historian after Is she that right? left as mayor, she worked part time as the town as the historian for a long time. That's that's a thing again that has struck me. Again, being here twenty years, I feel like this is my hometown, even though I was raised somewhere, spent a, a large chunk of my life elsewhere. When I got here, especially Morana, more than anywhere else, it just felt like I was at home. I knew people. It didn't take long to make what I feel are lifelong friends. And it's because, I think a lot of it's because of what you broached this morning is all the parks and people getting together. You talked about meeting and conversing with each other and barbecuing with each other. Isn't that how you build strong communities? By bringing people together? If you can recreate, you know, where a lot of people in our community meet each other from different neighborhoods, is bringing their children or grandchildren to a water park, to a softball or baseball game they're playing in, yep, or to a soccer game they're mm-hmm. playing in. So people bring their children or grandchildren that are participating. Well, they start talking to the people. Well, that's my daughter playing soccer. Oh, yeah, well, that's my granddaughter right there next to her, you know, and pretty soon those yeah. people become friends. Yeah. It's a, it's a way to bring people together, and it's a way to build community together. Matter of fact, some of the be- <laughs> when you were saying that, I was thinking about some of the best friends that I have long-term in that 20 years were met at a chain-link fence at a baseball <laughs> field. And they're lifelong friends. I've got, I'm thinking of a, a handful of people right now that I've known 20 years, and we met at a little league game or a oh, baseball sure. game, oh, and leaning sure. over the fence and develop friendships that I've been to now their weddings and funerals, unfortunately, <laughs> and new babies being born right. because of, I always said most of my relationships started at a, at a baseball field. <laughs> you know, our, our Heritage Park uh, between the River Park, mm-hmm. which is long, I talked about it from Continental Ranch mm-hmm. all the way to Sanders Road. <clears throat> There's also a park there. We have two new soccer fields that just opened this year. And they were built by the developers of Gladden II, Crown West uh, uh, Real Estate. And it's paid for by the town. We will reimburse them on park impact fees and stuff for building those fields. We have two brand new lit soccer fields with restroom facilities. We're also going to have a dog park there. That's not ready yet, but it's going to be built. We're going to have a lot of parking. Again, it's a place to bring people together. Gladden Farms is a huge community, and Gladden, too, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's a beautiful park And as well. uh, that it is really a beautiful is. park, but we have soccer fields. We have a couple baseball diamonds. We have a splash pad there. It, it, incidentally, that's free, that people can walk from Gladden Farms or Rancho Moran or Honey Heights, but people can drive there very quickly and use that park. And like I said, they can play ball, they can play soccer, they can play in the splash pad, they can walk their dog, and we're going to build a dog park there as well in that Heritage Park. And uh, so that's really becoming a major, major park for the town of Marana and all the activities that it has. Uh, if you go right down the uh, uh, Santa Cruz River walk to the old original neighborhood in Marana, the Honey Heights neighborhood, there's about a 35-acre park there. And the town of Marana was able to buy that land years ago. Only a couple acres of it is actually developed right now. There's mm-hmm. some picnic tables, 
a basketball court, some playground equipment, swings, teeter-totters, uh, a restroom and a drinking fountain and, and that type of stuff. But our dream eventually is to build more soccer fields mm-hmm. there, more baseball mm-hmm. fields, more walking paths and biking paths. For the children of Gladden Farms and Rancho Miranda and Honey Heights or anywhere in the community that want to come and use that facility, uh, right now people just ride their bicycles through it or, or whatever. And that park we're going to expand. It has a half-court basketball. We're going to make it a full court. I think it has uh, four swings. We're going to put in eight because it's getting so much use. <clears throat> and another thing that a park like that does is it brings the communities within the community together. Exactly. My sister lives right up the hill from that, I mean, literally 100 yards from that park. And if I'm over visiting her and I walk down there, I'll see people out there shooting hoops or playing on the swings. And I'm like, well, introduce myself because I don't know everybody in the community. Uh, where do you live? Well, we live in uh, Gladden Farms. We're up you know a little ways but we walk down the river path and we come down here because there's a basketball court and we like to shoot hoops or there's swings and and we love to play on the swings with our children and i talked to the people right next to them the young couple with a couple of children well where do you live well we live in honey heights here and we we can walk through the neighborhood after school or on weekends and come down here and these people are all talking to each other they may be different religions, different ethnicity, different whatever, mm-hmm. but the, they came to the same place with their children. Well, then the moms and dads are sitting over on a picnic bench shooting the bull. They've made new friends, yeah. even from different communities within the community. Mm-hmm. The parks bring them all together. And I just think that... Uh, Outdoor activities and parks are so important. I don't want to be redundant, but I talked about us leaving our parks open during COVID. Mm -hmm. As soon as by state law, statute, that we knew our parks could be open, Mm -hmm. they were open. Absolutely. Because people need to get out and get some sunshine and get some exercise and breathe some fresh air and and meet new people. You know, that was one of the saddest things during that time frame to drive by i have a little park right pretty much in front of my house and to see the yellow tape on the picnic benches that was just heartening okay because you know we we need we need to be outdoors you know i wonder ed with marana being one of the fastest growing communities in arizona i read the other day at number four how much do you think this has to it that that outdoor at places where people can actually go outdoors and, and engage in activities and meet each other, it's got to be a big component well, towards that, doesn't it? People come to the region. Well, some come to retire, but a lot come for a job. But that man or woman has a spouse. They have children. They want their children to have good schools. They want their children to have a place to recreate to where they can play softball or they can play soccer or they can – play in the in the splash pad <clears throat> and people will choose a place because of the comfort of the place they like the neighborhoods they like the people i mentioned before we're a, a complete mishmash of people yes we are we we just all live and work yeah. together and do things together and we recreate together as yeah. well the last thing I would like to talk about today is kind of the granddaddy of them all. The town of Marana is in the process of designing now. It's already been approved, and we approved the financing mechanism. A new community slash aquatic center. We had started at about 50,000 square feet. I think we're up to about 65,000 square feet. This is going to be a community center for everybody. It's going to have three indoor basketball courts. That's a pretty big room. Those courts don't have wooden floors. They have a poly-type court, Mm -hmm. and that poly is soft, and it works just like regular basketball wood courts and everything where people can play on them. 
you can go inside of this building and you could be playing tennis on one court and on the other end you could have a basketball game in this same building. It's large enough that we could have the uh, state of the town addresses if mm -hmm. we wanted to. Uh, the downtown area down there is where we have our holiday festival and our Christmas tree lighting. And a lot of times it's hot or it's rainy. We can put them in this building now because it's right there. How many people will, would would the capacity be on something like that? Oh, in, I don't indoor? know, but I mean, our our Thousands. events will have eight to ten thousand people yeah, at them. Thousands the holiday of festival, and uh, and the uh, when, when are, that that's soon. I mean, this was voted on by last fall, I believe. The first, the holiday festival is, is the first weekend in December. Now, the harvest festival is over at the Heritage Park where we have the uh, uh, big pole barn and the old heritage house, and uh, we have the barn there that had horses in it and everything else. That's in uh, early October, yeah, I think, yeah. the first couple, weekend in October. Weeks. But getting back to this community yeah, wanna... center, we said we need to build this building, and it's an aquatic center as well, but... It's going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to $60 million to build. Could Marana build it? Could we borrow the money and pay for it out of our general monies and stuff? Yeah, we probably could. But I'll tell you the reason we didn't. I'll give Terry Rosema a lot of the credit for this. He said, Mayor... We could hire a few less police officers each year in our growing community. We could hire a few less park and rec people or put less uh, equipment and amenities in our parks each year because we need to take the money to pay for this building. Uh, we could do uh, road repair more slowly instead of patching a pothole, like I had said, almost daily. Mm -hmm. If we get a call on it, it might take two or three days because we have less people. Or we can continue to provide the extremely high level of service we're providing now and identify another way to pay for this building. So we went out and talked to all the HOAs. We went to churches, we went to schools, we went to HOAs, we went to anybody that would get together and talk to us. Said we'd like to do a half cent sales tax, which generates about $8 million a year to build this facility. We passed that from the dais and it started in January. Mm -hmm. We're starting to collect the tax now because we're doing design. Didn't get one letter of complaint, one writing to the newspaper, one nasty phone call or anything, because it's a building for the people to serve the people. So we're now nine months into <clears throat> So we're about nine months into that. design. It takes about a year to design these things. I mean, you have to do drainage. Not only do you have to design the building right, all the, and the aquatic center, right. which is going to be huge, and I'll get into more detail on that. You've got to do drainage and sewer and water and parking and roads and everything else that you have to do. So it takes about a year to design, and it will take about two years to build. So we'll open in 24, 24 I'm thinking, late, sometime probably. in 24. I want to talk about the aquatic center. We, we have one pool in the town of Marana with 57 or 58,000 people and another 50,000 in the county around us right. that use a lot of our facilities, which we, we invite them to do. Uh, you know, it, it's just we need, we need a, a big place to meet. We need a big place for our holiday festival. We need a place that if we need to have a big community meeting on something that's that really is, we, we need a place we can put right. five or six hundred right. people in a, in in or seven or eight hundred people right. for a meeting. And so we're building this facility. The aquatic center here is going to have lap pools 
And so swim teams and mm-hmm. swim clubs from the high school, the middle school, or even private clubs can come and have swim meets at this facility. It will also have a splash pad for recreation at this facility. It uh, will have diving pools. It will have recreational just pools for people to get into. And I'll tell you another group of people that likes to use our pool are seniors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of seniors, mostly ladies, but a few of the guys are not comfortable trying to exercise, you know, because of balance or whatever. But when they get in the pool, they are because they know they're not going to fall over or they're just going to float over on their side or something if they do. Seniors will be able to exercise there. Young people will be able to have swim meets there. We'll be able to recreate in the summer there. And we're building the aquatic center next to this big recreational community center so that they can share things like restrooms. You may have a a girl's ladies restroom that has 20 stalls and 20 showers and all of that kind of facility. You can use it if you're in the rec center playing basketball or if you're in the aquatic center swimming to change clothes or whatever. And then having those big restroom facilities, if we do have town events in there, we have the facilities to take care of of large numbers of people. So the aquatic center is going to be phenomenal. It is really going to be phenomenal. Uh, Have some of the things kind of like Naranja Park in Oro Valley has. I'll give our our neighbors some creds. That's a pretty nice Mm -hmm. facility. And uh, we've gone to Maricopa and we've gone to Goodyear and we've looked at their buildings and their aquatic centers. And it looks like ours might even be bigger than theirs. This building's going to be there long past me or my children or maybe even my grandchildren. Let's build the facility to where it has the capacity for growth in a fast-growing community Mm -hmm. like ours. Another thing that that large recreational center will have is a whole lot of meeting rooms, and it will be set up with Wi-Fi for free. And what happens is, is... Kids get out of the middle school, Mm -hmm. which is within walking distance, or they get out of uh, the elementary school there. uh, You know, uh, they can come over there. There are certain parts of that facility you'll need to buy an annual or a monthly pass to get into. But when you first come in, there's kind of a big recreational or big center with tables and, and television screens and things like that. If a youngster gets out of school and maybe it's an hour before their parents can come and pick them up, they can walk they over a safe there. Haven. They have a safe haven in there that will be monitored by adults. They can study. There's Wi-Fi. You know, uh, Miranda schools are Chromebook uh, from kindergarten to right. 12th grade. Pull out your computer. you got Wi-Fi going. in yeah. that building. Uh, the entry part of that building is a free part of the building and you can have restrooms and get a drink of water and you can socialize with your friends in a safe area and be out of the elements and stuff as well so it will serve that purpose there will also be a lot of meeting rooms in this facility drop down screens from the ceiling all of these meeting rooms will have wi-fi you bring your quilting club in there and you want to have a meeting (laughs) And, I, and, and literally, they will. My sure they will. My mother used to belong sure, to the yeah. Seniors Quilting Club out there. But uh, you want to show a video of somebody at a quilting uh, you know, show or somebody a new way to make a certain pattern or whatever. You pull it up on your Wi-Fi. You direct it to that screen. And you show the video to the members of your club right there in that recreational center. And that's recreation. If seniors come there to quilt or play cards or just to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and talk to each other, that is recreation. Yes, it is. It's getting you out of the house. Yes, it is. It's getting you together with other people. 
So recreation doesn't have to be running on a track or Thank kicking goodness. a ball. Or, Thank goodness, you know, Ed, as we get older, we don't have to be rec- running. Recreation can be just getting out, exactly. walking a little bit. This thing is going to have a walking track. It's going to be two stories high. And on the second floor, it's going to have a walking track all the way around these three basketball courts and stuff in the big building, uh-huh. the big open part of the building. Open inside, not it'll have. You know a how much pool. use out of get in the summertime when you can't get outside. When it's too I hot. when we were up in Goodyear, touring that facility with their vice mayor and, and a group of people, members of our council, we're up walking around that track. I almost got run over by a couple elderly ladies. <laughs> And it's kind of like they get in. It's, I've seen them. <laughs> again, it's safe. Yes. It's cool in the summer. Climate control. It's warm in the winter. It's climate <coughs> controlled. There are bathrooms and drinking fountains. And young, uh, older men and women, and they're in yeah, there yes, doing their are. power walk and say it's a quarter of a yeah. mile around the track, and I, I'm going to do 10 laps or yeah. whatever. God help you if you get in the way on the track like I did. I, I and and the lady just smiled as she went by. I mean, she, but I mean, it's like yeah. I was going to get yeah. run over. Yeah. But that's something else. It it it's a, it brings community together. It gets people out. It gives them a reason to go. That's why a lot of elderly people go and walk in shopping centers yes. in the morning. Yeah. They feel safe there. Yes. There's a lot of people. Yes. It's it's cool. That's what I was picturing when you said but that. But, I mean, seen basically, it. you can come to the rec center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can change your clothes. You can shower. You can do whatever you want to do. You can walk around the track for a while. And then you can sit on a bench and watch the kids play basketball or whatever, whatever you want to do. But recreation, like I said, can be from playing pinochle to kicking a soccer ball. It can be... From three and four year olds, literally, that will get yeah. out and play t ball right. or whatever, to the ninety year olds yeah, that want to come in and use our facilities, and I think we've done a very good job of that. I'm very proud of this new center we're going to build. I think Moran is on the map, but this gives us a center destination within walking distance of the Marana Health Center main building. Marana Public Schools, main offices, Mm -hmm. Town of Marana, main offices, Chamber of Commerce, main offices, Police Department, main office, are within walking distance of this facility. And we own the land. Yeah. And we're going to build it. And, And I'm very proud of our council and our senior staff and members of the community that have put this together. And I, 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 think we could probably end there but recreation is really important to marana and its council you know i mentioned earlier and i'm going to talk to our our viewers our listeners i i firmly believe this is why marana is growing at the clip that it's growing at it's because of and i said to you on on the way in this morning as we were coming into the studio I have a great deal of respect and admiration for all the council, for you, the council members. You guys have done a terrific job predating when I got here. Obviously, a lot of the foundation was laid before I showed up. But in the 20 years I've been here and have watched closely what's been going on, I'm very proud. As I jokingly say, it's the truth. I sleep in Oral Valley, but I live in Marana. (laughs) And I'm proud, and I'm proud and thank to be you a part, for doing that. To be a part of this community. It, it, it's that. really exciting. And I really believe that that's the reason why Marana is growing at the pace that it's growing, because of all the amenities that it has. And it attracts every age, every demographic is represented here, age-wise, ethnicity, ethnicity. Um, and it, people aren't just coming here by accident, Ed. They're choosing. They're it, choosing. It's Marana. becoming a destination more and more. You know, uh, we're not big enough to have a lot of the big fancy things that some large, large cities. But quality of life in Marana is pretty good. Yeah, it is. Quality of life in Marana is pretty good. So I want to thank you 
as usual. I want to thank the leadership in the town of Marana, the Terrys of the world that have just done right. an incredible job leading the growth. And uh, we'll see you next week, Ed. Thank you, Clint. It's uh, always a pleasure. It's to be my here. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, David.